Hello everyone. In this video we're going to begin our discussion of table doubling. And we're going to do this with some sort of motivating problem. Here we're imagining that we have some array A that is, has various elements in it and it's full, but we need to add an element to this array. This happens lots of the time. Uh, one example we've seen very recently would be in hashing. If this was a hash table and it became full and we needed to insert another element, it would be ideal as a user to not need to worry about reallocating memory and doing all of this. It would be nice if on the back end it just did all of that hard work for us. So let's figure out how we can do that. So let's start with a very naive way of doing this. We're going to say, let's start with eight elements and then we need to insert a ninth element. After inserting that ninth element, we will increase the size of the array, or I guess before. Once we've done that, let's increase the size of the array when we insert another element. So when we insert a 10th element, we'll also have needed to increase the size. Then when we insert an 11th element, we'll also need to have increased the size. And then when we insert a 12th element, we'll also need to have increased the size. And if we kept doing this up until, say, 100 elements, Let's examine how much this would cost to perform as an operation. So what is the cost of doing this? In order to increase the size of an array, we must, if it is a standard array that's allocated in a single block of memory within the computer's RAM, we must reserve a new block of memory and copy all of those old values to the new location. So the cost here would be the cost of inserting the element plus the cost of copying over everything. So I'm going to move this down to be in the right location. The cost of the next operation would be the cost of insertion plus the cost of moving everything. And this will re repeat for each of these insertions. In general, we will assume that the cost of a copy is equal to the number of new locations in an array, not just the number of elements. Here, those happen to be the same but I'm stealing these values of 12 and 11 and 10 and 9 from this column, not from the first column. And for our last one, it would be 100C. So if I want to compute the total cost here, T of N, it would equal how many copies of C would I have? Going from 8 to 100, including not 8, would give me 92 copies of C. C plus C plus C plus C for all 92 of those insertions, plus the cost of all of those other insertions, which is 9C plus 10C plus 11C plus up until 100C. That looks a lot like an arithmetic summation, and in fact it is. So let's rephrase this problem in a different way and see if we can do this in a more general approach. Here, I went up to 10 elements, what if instead I went up to n elements and n elements, and then the cost here would be similar, but now we're having n times c or cn. So let's adjust our runtime here. And that is an arithmetic summation. You could compute the sum as t of n is equal to, we have that 92c no matter what is happening, plus we have the sum of the first n elements would be equal to n times n plus 1 over 2, but I don't want to add up the first 8 of those, so that would be minus 8 times 9 over 2. You could write that out in a more formal way if you wanted. But the important thing is that this is going to be n squared minus a constant. So the cost of doing n insertions is in theta of n squared. And that's not really ideal. We'd want to make that hopefully a little bit better by doing something more clever along the way, we would hope. And we're going to try to discover a more organic way to do this so that we better improve our runtime. 